Eudora Lite at one point was a very popular email program in the early days of the internet. And that's what this video is going to be about. For those of you that have no idea what you're looking at right now, this is Windows 3.1. From the early 1990s, the, this was the version of Windows before Windows 95. 98 NT ME uh, XP Vista 7. Did I miss any? Probably, but whatever. Anyway, so there are some people even today, even now, that are still using Eudora Lite. Now, here's what it looks like. Okay. This is Eudora uh, 3, the Eudora Lite 3. Now, there was a Eudora Pro version, um, which I don't know what advantage that gave you. But anyway, this is a pop-only client, meaning it won't do IMAP, and it certainly won't do Delta Sync from Microsoft, uh, but it does pop. Uh, for those that have never used this client before, probably would find it exceedingly difficult to set up, because it's not exactly simple in that respect. But once you dive into it, the Eudora way, so to speak, is something that holds great affection with many email users because they feel that there is no other client that does it as good as Eudora did. Even now. Mac users in particular loved Eudora. So anyway, let's get into it. Now as far as setting up an email account, now I have an ISP account that I uh, set up specifically for use with this client just to show you how it works. And uh, by the way, this client will not do SSL as far as I know. I looked through here, I tried to see if it was under advanced network or somewhere, and no, this one will only do plain authentication is what it's called now. Anyway, okay. So first of all, when you actually go to the getting started part, you have to put in the actual full mail server here. Now the actual address here is menga at tampabay.rr.com, which is, uh, as I said a moment ago, I created it via my ISP account. I don't use that email address, but I created it just for this. However, the POP server name is actually pop-server.tampabay.rr.com, and I have to put in this whole thing because it authenticates as user at this server. And then I put in my name, and then for the personal info, there's the pop account. The return address is where the actual email address goes, and then the dial-up <laughs> username, because this uh, mail client was programmed at a time when nobody had broadband, so it just assumed dial-up, but that is the actual uh, username for the account, and then the hosts, which again is user at mail server, and then the outgoing mail server, ph and finger, you don't have to worry about. And then you have your other stuff. Uh, again, in checking mail, you have to put in the entire POP account, user at wholemailserver.com, whatever. How often it checks for mail. Now, the uh, option to skip messages is there because in the days of dial-up, anything over 50K was it took a long time to download because even at this time that this client was out, people were connecting at 14.4. Uh, or 28.8 bits per second, or uh, kilobits per second, excuse me. So anything over 50k, you had to really think about whether you wanted to download that or not, because <laughs> it would take a while. So I had an option in here to skip messages over a certain size, and it set it to 40. What would happen is that it would show the mail header, but it wouldn't actually download the message. The mail header is, a, is an instant download, because it's only a, a few bits of text. So it didn't download the actual entire body of the message. And you could optionally say, OK, yeah, I want to download this. Now I have some time, <laughs> or wait until later. And the other stuff here is pretty much how most mail clients work today. Uh, send on check, save password, you can optionally leave mail server on uh, leave mail on the mail server or not, or delete it after so many days. And determine yeah, there's determined first unread message by first message not read by this machine. This was in case you had mail on multiple computers using the same account. Or by the uh, status of the headers or the last command of pop which meant uh, which mail was last read on the server and mail server end rather than the local end. Alright, so as far as sending mail is concerned, 
again the return address a lot of redundancy you'll see in this so uh, return address is your full address you put your SMTP server here again and let's see for replying you could map a key uh, replying to all you had some options there for file attachments you had the option of using MIME or bin hex encoding there was the attachment directory now that was one of the very unique things by the way about Eudora and this is part of the reason why there's some people who still use it to this day the way that Eudora at least in this version stores uh, mail attachments is not within the message itself it will actually detach it and put it into a separate attachment directory entirely which is weird or at least it's weird now because the way that mail clients work today is that the message and any attachments are all embedded within the single email itself but that's not the way Eudora did it some people said say that the Eudora way of doing attachments is how all mail clients should do it but I don't personally agree with that but that's the way it did it and then you had some options for fonts and your mailbox columns what you wanted to show and not show what sound you wanted to play they had extra warnings and more dial-up stuff here now here was the interesting thing about this is that you could if you wanted to have the client itself act as the dialer that's why there is options here for a modem and your baud rate and what com port or serial port you wanted to use so hardware or software flow control which <laughs> I'm not going to get into that, but that was uh, in the days of what we call soft modems or wind modems, as those were awful. Uh, so hardware controlled modems were always the preference whenever you could get one. You could even choose uh, your service provider if you wanted to, and you'll see uh, Qualcomm actually was who made this software, actually did offer dial up service, which was interesting. Now there weren't a lot of service providers listed in here because I, they probably uh, Qualcomm had to partner with certain companies to say can we list you in here and blah 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 and so on. And then you had some advanced network uh, Mappy server. I, uh, to be honest, I don't even know what that is. It has something to do. I've never seen it anywhere except in uh, the Eudora client. I'm sure it means something. I don't know. I also don't know what uh, Kerberos means either. I think that that's, it has fire around it. It, it is a, a layer of security, but I don't know much about it. And then you have some miscellaneous options after that. Okay, so anyway, go to the mail. Oops. Never register. This is an unregistered version of it. So you get your standard welcome wagon mail, and the first thing you'll notice here is that it is in plain text, because I do not believe this client has any way to render HTML-based email and the next question you probably have is okay what about things like folders well that is another unique thing about Eudora if I go to special and was it under special under tools I'm sorry it was under tools and then view mailboxes folders actually were treated as separate mailboxes outright now if I want to do a new folder I would have to do a new one and then choose to make it a folder I'll just call it stuff Okay, and then after you make the folder, you actually have to create the mailbox, so I'll call that one stuff as well. Okay, so I have a top level stuff and stuff is here, but if I want to view it, I have to go to mailbox, stuff, which is there now, and stuff, and there it is. There is the folder for it, which is treated as a mailbox. Now when I want to compose an email, they have these nice little icons up here. This one is to open the mail. If you have nothing, Oh no, where's my stuff? It's right here. The sent mail is in the out box, so you have in and out. If I usually what most Eudora users did is they tiled them either horizontally or vertically, like so. Let's get rid of this. Resize this guy. Okay. Uh you you have your check mail here, which you know, sorry you don't have any new mail. Uh, you have to compose a new message here and then you have the option to reply, reply to all, forward, redirect. Redirect was kind of an interesting option because you could take it and uh, it's sort of kind of like a forward but not. I'm not going to get too much into it but 
redirecting it was just like a interesting way this was not exactly a forward it is yet it isn't yeah whatever so anyway you have uh back and forward buttons which is previous and next and then you have come on show the tooltip attaching a file is here your address book is here very simple address book mind you which was sorted by uh nickname the ability to print and the help section if you click on this you see my icon turns into a question mark if i click on some area you'll either say the topic does not exist or if i click on something that actually has help to it like that they'll say open next message opens the next message in the mailbox so anyway let me minimize this and send an email to myself I'll show you what happens using Netscape Mail, <laughs> which I think I did a video on before. Okay, new message to test mail to Eudora. Test, oops, test mail to Eudora. Now I'm actually sending this as an HTML email, but it's going to send it as both HTML and plain so Eudora should be able to recognize it and send. Okay so that should be yep that's sent. Okay so get out of here back to Eudora and check. You have new mail. If you take a look and yes, everything is done as a separate window in this client. Test mail to Eudora. Now there's this button here called blah blah blah. Now all that does, <laughs> I like it that they called it that, that's kind of interesting. I can hit this button and it actually shows all the uh, mail headers where you can optionally turn it off. You can actually edit the message, which I thought was interesting. So if you want to actually edit received email for whatever reason, you just hit this button and do it. And then there's retrieve from the server, so if I hit this, it will actually go download it physically from the server. And that's pretty much it. Now if I want to take this and move it to that stuff box, I can right clicking is available in here, so I right click this and transfer to stuff. And then mailbox stuff stuff. And there it is. If I go and delete it, okay, it's gone. But where is the trash folder? Okay, that's mailbox trash. Okay, so there's trash. I'll move it back, transfer to back to the inbox, and then I will reply. Actually, can I do it from with a note? Nope, can't do it from here. Uh, which is this one. Okay. And I will say uh, test reply, send. Okay, and it sent it. And you notice it puts a little R over here, which says, yes, it's been replied to. Now, where did it put that message? Well, that's in the out box, which is kind of confusing, because you don't ordinarily think of out as the out box, and which is not exactly the, you know, not the sent folder, right? <laughs> but it's called out here. And the S, I believe, means sent, I think. So if I go back into Netscape, just do a quick check here. Yep, there it is. Test reply, and it worked. And that's how we used to do email back in the days, kids. It sucked. <laughs> it worked, but it sucked. And yeah, again, I'm surprised people still use this mail client. They and they do. Not version three. They use, I think, they use version six or seven before they finally. Uh, you, Qualcomm stopped making the client completely. But yeah, that's how we used to do mail back in the day and them there internets.